maintaining one's sexual purity requires more than simply abstaining from engaging in lustful activity, and it is also something that involves the heart. Do not commit adultery was another of the commandments that many people probably assumed they could check on a list of sins successfully dodged. But Jesus said that looking at a woman lustfully is to commit adultery with her in your heart. Immoral actions, then, begin with immoral thoughts, and the immoral thoughts are evil too. You can't address sin by only dealing with external actions. Lust is a vivid illustration of the kind of sin that Jesus urged his followers to avoid, and in today's culture, it presents a significant obstacle to the pursuit of moral purity. Jesus desires for his disciples to have such a profound commitment to moral purity that they are ready to cut off anything in their lives that tempts them to sin. But what is lust? Lust is a sexual desire that dishonors its object and disregards God. Sexual desire in itself is good. God made it in the beginning. It has its proper place but it was made to be governed or regulated or guided by two concerns, honor toward the other person and holiness toward God. Lust dishonors its object. Take honor, for instance. God established a relationship called marriage. In it, a man and a woman make a lifelong covenant to honor each other. Sexual desire becomes the helper and the zest of that covenant bond of mutual honor. Therefore, to say to another person, I want you to satisfy my sexual desire, but I do not want you as a covenant partner in marriage, basically means, I want to use your body for my pleasure, but as a whole person, I don't want you. And that is dishonoring, and therefore, lustful. Lust is sexual desire minus a commitment to honor the other person. Lust disregards God. The root of lust is a lack of regard for God. Living in supreme regard for a holy God is holiness, and the polar opposite is lust. Lust is defined as sexual desire that is not governed, regulated, or guided by a supreme regard for God. God created sexuality. He made it beautiful and good. He made it for the benefit of his creatures. He alone has the wisdom and authority to teach us how to use it for his glory and our honor. When we give sexual desire free reign and disregard for God, it becomes lust. Lust is a sexual desire that despises its object and disregards God. It is the corruption of a good thing due to a lack of honorable commitment and supreme regard for God. It is lust if your sexual desire is not guided by respect for the honor of others and reverence for God's holiness. Pondering the Danger of Lust Many people think lustful sexual attitudes are a matter of relatively insignificant personal piety. What counts is whether you boycott the latest news. Sleeping around is no big deal, and flipping through destructive content is insignificant. That is how the religious human mind reasons when supreme regard for God has been forsaken. But that is not what God has said. What is God's estimate of how important you are? Is it a big deal? This means that the consequences of lust will be worse than the consequences of otherworldly activities. All that work and do is extinguish the body. And Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, verses 4 and 5, I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that of nothing more that they can do. But I will point out to you whom you should fear. Fear the one who, after he is killed, has authority and power to hurl you into hell. Yes, I say to you, Stand in great awe of God and fear Him. In other words, God's vengeance is much more fearful than earthly annihilation. And according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 6, God's vengeance is coming upon those who disregard the warning against lust. 
1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 6 and that in this matter of sexual misconduct no man shall transgress and defraud his brother because the Lord is the avenger in all these things just as we have told you before and solemnly warned you the Word of God speaks to the depths of our sensual desire the truth of God's unwavering standard of holiness calls our moral failings into question. The Bible contains wisdom and instruction that encourage us to trust God for liberation from worldly desire. Flee immorality. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 12 and 13. All things are permitted for me, but not all things are of benefit. All things are permitted for me but I will not be mastered by anything. Food is for the stomach, and the stomach is for food. However, God will do away with both of them. But the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. Although God wonderfully designs the body for the reception and assimilation of food, there is one certain thing, the body, is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. God never intended the human body to be used for vile or impure purposes when He created it. Instead, He intended it to be used for the Lord's glory and blessed service. This verse contains something incredible that should not be overlooked. Not only is the body for the Lord, but the thought that the Lord is for the body is even more amazing. This means that the Lord is concerned about our bodies, well-being, and proper use. God desires that our bodies be presented to Him as a living sacrifice that is holy and acceptable. As Erdman says, Without the Lord, the body can never attain its true dignity and its immortal destiny. His interest in her body does not end at the time of death. He will raise the body of every believer to fashion it like the glorious body of the Lord Jesus. We will not be disembodied spirits in eternity. Instead, our spirit and soul will be reunited with our glorified body, thus enjoying the glories of heaven forever. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15 do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Am I therefore to take the members of Christ and make them part of a prostitute? Certainly not. Every believer is a member of the body of Christ. Is it proper then to take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? To ask the question is to answer it, as Paul does with an indignant certainly not. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 Or do you not know that the one who joins himself to a prostitute is one body with her? For he says the two shall become one flesh. 